So very uh, good morning and uh, uh, welcome you all again to this wonderful Hoya Industry Symposium. So I think uh, uh, in my practice of over 22 years, I haven't seen any uh, uh, lens making company to grow as fast as uh, Hoya. And believe me, uh, the only credit that we can give to this is their amazing products and the delivery system. I'm really a fan of this wonderful product. I've been using uh, products from all uh, different uh, manufacturers, but uh, what uh, you know really enchants is the material and their delivery system and you know not only that it's the consistency or the repetability that you know every lens behaves uh, in the same way so i think uh, kudos to uh, this uh, wonderful industrial product so what i'll be talking in the next uh, five to ten minutes is the wound integrity with the nanex multi-cert and uh, i do not have any financial disclosures so this is just a small clip which I recorded uh, just a day before coming. Just watch. This is a typical uh, some another preloaded. Just see the wound. I just wanted you to see in the slow motion the wound and the way the lens behaves. So uh, it's in the wound and I'm trying to push. There is a stretch. So just watch at the stretch and just watch the lens. So it simply goes and you know shoots. So watch again, just see how much is the wound getting distended and the lens, how it behaves. So it, you know, abnormal uh, opening of uh, these kind of lenses where, you know, when you're trying to push these lenses, they might go on the opposite side, cause dialysis, cause uh, damage to the iris, damage to the bag. And just watch a polar cataract, carefully done FACO. And this is, uh, what you see is a very smooth consistent delivery where you can actually slowly nudge inside the bag and that is what most of the surgeons we as experienced or maybe beginners would always request and require to these lenses and just watch uh, this is a beautiful overlap 0.5 millimeters all around the lens and uh, believe me, the lens is going to remain stable, whether it's a toric or a non-toric. And uh, if even if uh, these uh, multifocal or trifocal lenses, which uh, the company is planning to begin uh, starting, so getting a good effective lens position is what is you know uh, the behavior required. So importance of preloaded. Why preloaded at all? We require. So most of these injector cartridge delivery systems usually behave in a very erratic manner. They are unpredictable always there are risk of potential complications and for me the most important you know when i rush uh, we have done a lot of dialysis damage the iris damage the bag damage the uh, the endothelium and uh, because of their you know unpredictable behavior yes cleaning has always been an issue stability is always an issue and there is definitely an impact of uh, cartridge on the aisle surface you've seen a lot of indian manufacturers where you know once you pass on the lens it rubs against the cartridge and you have those uh, material you know sticking on to the uh, the surface of the hydrophobic implant which you keep on rubbing with your uh, irrigation cannula and you know on day one it gives an impression on the slit lamp and uh, might as well uh, interfere with uh, the uh, vision and give you some photic phenomena. So uh, manual loaded aisle delivery system so pre-operative we know we have to sterilize those hand pieces you have to have those cartridges you have to pick up you have to load and you have to every time ask your nursing staff to you know wash them properly metal injectors in the aisle forceps and what if if we have good beautiful delivery systems which you know intraoperatively you know once you have done the the good fake emulsification you just need to go in and inject this system so uh, gone are those days i believe where you actively you know involve all these steps of opening folding picking up the forceps loading into the cartridge set up into the handpiece and then implanting i think all these steps in turn are you know one of these causes of losing stability in your OR so if all of these steps are gone and you just have to you know directly take the product and push it I think uh, that's so very wonderful saving on time giving you that extra peace of mind giving you that consistent delivery system and where you have a mindset that yes no extra organism would be there and you don't have anything uh, all around the IOL which might cause an abnormal TAS or an abnormal reaction on day one. 
so no human touch from the manufacturing to the implant is what the goal should be and i think the whole industry is drifting towards this preloaded uh, delivery system uh, giving you the ultimate stability and ultimate peace of mind so uh, we always we have seen how the cataract surgery has evolved all these years 70s to 80s 90s where the incision size has really gone from almost 12 millimeters to now what we can uh, say to almost less than 12 uh, 2.2 millimeters or as close to 1.8 or 2 millimeters so uh, this has really transformed our surgery uh, to a decrease of the post operative astigmatism there is always you know the gone uh, it reduces the risk of uh, the the less the incision size the less is the incidence of you know the post operative wound infections and there is it transforms into early recovery of the patients after the surgeries so definitely uh, uh, cutting on to the incision size uh, translates into a good uh, day one uh, refractive uh, outcome in most of these cataract patients so this nanex multi cert product is uh, uh, basically a hydrophobic a quick word of the, the the lens material so it's a hydrophobic acrylic and uh, overall it's a 13 into 6 and it's an aspheric design with sharp optic edge which contributes to the lesser pco apart from their active oxygen on the posterior surface it's a modified c loop with a 5 degree angulation and uh, the surface is again uh, treated with active oxygen processing which gives you a, a good addition between the the posterior capsule and the lens and thereby you know their technology helps in uh, preventing those early pcos and uh, the power is from plus 6 to plus 30 in uh, diopters of almost 0.5 so I think for me as a refractive surgeon, this is very important where we have the lenses with these increments and actually once we are working uh, with uh, the uh, higher end uh, uh, optical biometers like uh, Isle Master 700 and where we are doing uh, laser assisted cataract surgeries. So actually what is more important is uh, being bang on target uh, with uh, the, uh, the lenses. So uh, at the same time, I'll request uh, the, the, these, uh, the, uh, the industry to uh, supply us just the accurate power which is required and uh, more so with the toric IULs because any 0.5 plus and minus would, you know, uh, again, uh, uh, as uh, Dr. Anurag was saying, uh, induce aberrations and, you know, would give you uh, the suboptic results. So uh, this is uh, the delivery system with this, which is a disposable preloaded system. And uh, the type of the injector, it is called four in one because you have uh, four options here. You can either screw or you can uh, push. And at the same time, this is the sleeve here, which can be pulled uh, so that you can have either a wound assisted delivery or you can have uh, in the bag aisle. So this is called the insert shield and it depends on the surgeon's choice. Now for me, this insert shield has been a great aid when I'm dealing with those non-dilating pupils. When I'm dealing where patients I just want, uh, where the uh, bag is a little compromised uh, on the, uh, the zonular part and uh, there is some amount of zonular weakness, I don't want to actually uh, push or pull the bag. So I just want the lens to directly deliver inside the bag. So I would, uh, in all these patients, a small pupil and you know, compromised zonules, I would pull this shield and ensure that the lens just goes and sits inside the bag, snugly opens inside the bag. And this is, I would appreciate, this is a wonderful uh, concept of this shield here. So the nozzle size is uh, the uh, is 1.62, which is claimed to be the smallest size in an open loop preloaded hydrophobic IOLs. And the incision size can be, you know, as close to 1.8 millimeters. So uh, uh, with this uh, beautiful injector delivery system, uh, you have a good uh, hydrophobic acrylic lens material, which gives you that peace of mind of uh, uh, low or uh, negligible PCOs, uh, protects uh, the integrity of the wound, and uh, gives you a very outstanding delivery uh, system. And what is more important is the delivery is consistent. So I think this is very important that every lens, whether it is plus six or plus 30, you know, it behaves and unfolds and reciprocates in exactly the same way. So this is very important as against to, you know, the IOs that we have been using, we've been seeing that, you know, uh, IOLs where you have uh, more than uh, 25 diopters, they, those lenses which unfold uh, in, in really an abnormal way. And at times you might have those haptics or the optics getting fractured. 
So, uh, and then again, the four in one preloaded delivery system uh, with this, uh, the multi serve. So, uh, over uh, 10 million lenses uh, so far implanted with this uh, hydrophobic material, which, uh, you know, uh, itself uh, proves their, you know, uh, <coughs> uh, the quality of the material. Now, this is a quick slide for the, the, the active oxygen processing, which uh, is claimed by Hoya. Uh, or, or, and this is on the Nanex and the Vivinex platform. So, this active oxygenation would, you know, enable and prevent uh, the early PCO. So, it uh, basically translates into uh, the additions between the posterior capsule and the, uh, the optic surface. So, uh, the, uh, if you see here, uh, this is uh, the, the, the nozzle diameter and uh, this is the ICERT, the 250 and 251, it's 1.82, then got down to 1.78 and 1.7 with the Vivinex and now with the Nanex, it's gone down to almost 1.62. So, uh, this is uh, the slow transformation that has occurred and uh, actually now we are standing here with the smallest uh, size uh, nozzle uh, claimed to be uh, the, uh, the smallest in the world. So, uh, this was a wonderful study done by uh, the David uh, Apple uh, Laboratory where, you know, they were trying to, uh, with the calipers, they uh, actually, before the IL implantation and then after the IL implantation in the porcine eyes, they were measuring the size, the wound size and uh, the various uh, knife sizes used. And uh, if you see uh, the bar chart here, this was the Nanex uh, two millimeters where the incision was uh, two and it came out finally the incision size after the IL implantation was close to 2.25 as against uh, the Raven uh, was uh, 2.4. So more of wound stretching here. And uh, if you see the Nanex multi-cert here, 1.8, uh, final incision size was close to 2.18 as against two, if you see, this is uh, the Zeiss CT Asfina, which uh, came down to 2.37. With the Ultra Cert, it was uh, with the size of 2.2 was stretched to almost 2.56. And uh, with the iTech from 2.2, it was almost 2.62. So all in all, uh, uh, Nanex uh, is the uh, the platform which causes minimal uh, wound stretching, and that is what is required. Once you are hydrating the wound, you don't find the wound leaking, and you have the two lips uh, adhering very close to each other. So uh, consistency is also what is very important. So there are no leading or trailing haptic tucking failure. So we find all those kissing uh, haptic optic and you keep on waiting for them to you know uh, release so i think uh, as uh, uh, dr anurag pointed out it's one of the reasons is the textured uh, the haptic but in these uh, lenses still the techiness uh, of the optic and the haptic is not there and uh, it actually you know uh, every time that you uh, implant the lens it opens up beautifully and goes and sits inside the back there are no broken injected tips after the IL release and you don't find those uh, haptics uh, getting uh, broken or cracked because uh, it opens up, you know, almost uniformly in uh, every patient uh, to my uh, experience. So uh, every surgeon has its own uh, criteria. One would use a push, the other would use a screw type. So if I am uh, using a hydro implantation, I can easily go with a push type. And if I want a very consistent delivery, I might uh, go in with viscoelastic and use the screw type here. And the depth management, as I said, with the shield can be done. Uh, so you can have the shield getting uh, pulled uh, if you want into the back, or if you just want a wound assisted, you can just uh, have as it comes so all in all, uh, it suits uh, the bag of all uh, the surgeons and uh, gives you a very good consistent uh, delivery system here. So this is uh, what is the four in one uh, multi cert the push as I said, uh, this is the screw uh, where you can hold with your one of the hands and your dominant hand would be you know screwing the lens inside the bag and the insertion options you have this uh, the nozzle which is pulled and this is almost into the bag and then if you don't want that you can have a wound assisted delivery system here. So uh, the various competition available in the world market uh, with the preloaded platforms, I think this is uh, Nanex uh, is a very beautiful preloaded system with an aspheric design, active oxygen. The incision size is as close to uh, 1.8 or maybe less and it shows a very good moderate kind of unfolding where it's neither too fast nor too slow 
and believe me what is more important is the consistency that every time you have the lens it opens up in the same uh, way it uh, would do every time with any of these extreme of the adapters so uh, all in all a great fan of this delivery system uh, and thanks to uh, hoya for giving us this wonderful product thank you